So good morning. I'm Laura Smith, and I'm an art uh, historian here at MSU. And, and I'm Megan Kudzia. I'm one of the digital scholarship librarians here at MSU. Uh, so, <clears throat> to start off our research, um, we focused on a small group of <clears throat> Michigan State University Museum stereographs featuring Diné, or Navajo peoples, um, to provide a unique opportunity to decolonize settler ways of knowing and seeing. The images were all published between 1900 and 1930 <clears throat> by one of the major American producers of stereographs, the Keystone View Company. Three of the stereographs feature weavers working on a loom. Five others are easily connected to the Navajo weaving industry. Subjects for these include trading posts, trains, and sheep herding. All of the stereographs were sold as part of travel or educational sets produced to enhance classroom pedagogy and general knowledge of the world. However, scholar Judith Babis has demonstrated that the stereograph often blinded viewers. The required use of a stereo viewer to see the images confined individuals to a seemingly natural space, uh, but one that was actually framed by a subjective photographer's eye. Text often imposed Euro-American perspectives of Native Americans. Uh, most messages conveyed the evolving story of the vanishing race or declining artistic practices, as in this case. Stereographs seemingly provided consumers with augmented visual knowledge and experience because they were products made possible by scientific principles and mechanical means. Babbitts writes that the use of stereoscopic vision further affirmed national progress and Western cultural authority. Keystone Teachers Manual's Babbitts writes explained the quote, general truths about the world based on cultural Darwinism that ranked nations on a progressive scale from primitive to civilized, end of quote. In line with recent archival photography research that has subverted the colonial gaze, our developing collaborative project evokes indigenous people's power of presence rather than directs their demise. And if moving images bother you, you can look away for just a second. This slide will be gone briefly. Um, <clears throat> Uh, for the first way our project has been seen as evoking a power presence is realized actually through the three-dimensionality um, of the format. Stereographs expand an entire figure's breadth. Uh, the enhanced illusion of depth, solidity, and perspective transport viewers vicariously into Diné environments guided by their perspectives. <clears throat> Secondly, the images will be inserted into Navajo socio-historical context and worldviews, though it never, may never be possible to identify the subject's names or reconnect those pictured with their families. Um, <clears throat> little extended research on most Keystone Company uh, stereographs exist in part because few records were kept. But Navajo stories can connect the figures to ancestral and contemporary economies and cultural practices. The final and third dimension for this research is to address the issues of authority and accessibility in the study and curation of indigenous knowledge and arts. Digital technologies enhance the opportunities for a wide variety of in in individuals to work together and for the protections to be globally engaged. Using Mercutu as a platform, a team uh, from MSU, including myself and Megan, have joined forces with Navajo weavers Linda teller Pete and Barbara Jean Ornalis to develop a portal. Um, the goals for this portal include those set by uh, the weavers to teach weaving from the Navajo perspective uh, and to educate uh, the Diné audiences about churro sheep, raising them and processing the wool. And these have been addressed primarily right now through contributions or will be addressed through Weaver's contributions, their writings on the images, uh, as well as linking the stereos, which you're able to do in Mercutu, is to link images to media, a variety of media um, uh, and videos <clears throat> as chosen by the Weavers. Uh, and then uh, another goal established by a brief uh, work that I did with a high school teacher is to provide access through primary source interviews with native artists, and in this case, it would be the weavers themselves. 
<clears throat> again, addressed through connecting weavers to the image, we, uh, videos to the we images. <laughs> Uh, so Laura's just spoken to the community goals and to uh, some of the requests that we've gotten about the project. Uh, the academic goals include uh, thinking more and documenting context and provenance. So that is uh, a place that I've been able to be of some assistance in this project in terms of um, metadata and archival best practice and we're continuing to uh, think about that and pull in other folks as needed on that. Um, and then also making uh, the resources available to a variety of stakeholders. So with that, I'm actually, yes, no, what? I was going to do a live demo. You want to talk? Oh, OK. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, so, uh, while we look at this, I'm going to talk you through a little bit uh, the platform choice. So this is the site, including uh, we recently were able to add some photography that Laura herself took. Um, we've got a landing page. Um, and then the browse is the easiest way to see the images right now. And I wanted to show you. It's slow to load. It's a known issue. Here we go. Um, and so here we get both the description and the cultural narrative uh, about the image itself. And so this is allowing us to incorporate some of that traditional knowledge back into the context of the image itself. Um, and so we chose this platform because um, it does focus on cultural heritage objects, um, but also from uh, an indigenous or like non-Western perspective and allowing um, knowledge creators uh, from various cultures to use cultural protocols to determine who should be able to see which images and when, um, and also to use traditional knowledge um, labeling that works really well with um, Creative Commons and existing copyright laws uh, to better support uh, indigenous needs. So um, it is also Drupal based for the technical folks among us. Um, it adds a series of modules onto Drupal, and we're running it on Reclaim Hosting, which is the company, and the program is Domain of One's Own, which is called MSU Domains here. There are many design and development challenges, as you can see. Um, the biggest ones from my perspective are uh, whether Mukutu is ultimately the best platform for us in the medium to long term. It is a very complex system, and it takes a lot of um, maintenance and development work, um, which is not the main portion of my job. So also, thinking about the sustainability of how, what is a responsible choice for a platform, given uh, that this is maybe something that all of us are doing in addition to other large parts of our jobs, especially the weavers. So for our next steps, uh, we are thinking about other campus departments that we might collaborate with. Uh, we are looking for some grant funding to fund content creation, and in particular to be able to provide stipends uh, and compensation to the weavers for telling their stories. Um, it's really important to us. Um, and also to continue to add functionality and then to incorporate feedback. So we welcome yours. Thanks. <laughs> 